Calling all nerds. This is More Than Dice, the podcast where we dive deep into the realms of everything nerdy. Whether you're a nerd culture connoisseur, a tabletop titan, a miniature gaming marveler, or just someone who proudly embraces their inner geek, this is the podcast for you. And now here's your hosts, Gonzo, John, and Nerd. Oh, and uh, sometimes Mizzy. episode of more than dice we're on episode 297 almost to 300 wow i mean that's it's over 9,000. i was okay. so as i was getting ready today i was just kind of thinking about that and we have been doing this podcast since 2017 and to be 300 episodes almost 300 episodes in and this is not counting all the other things we have on our network there's just talking about podcast episodes it is pretty freaking crazy to be almost 300 episodes doing this from 2017 outlasting and outdoing and outperforming and outshining and you know we're such a professional podcast that you know we do everything professionally right john yeah including give me enough time to go make my drink <laughs> hey when you're a professional pirate <laughs> look remember unlike you heathens i measure <laughs> So welcome to the episode. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm nerd. But uh, today I was I was thinking because I was writing up you know what what episode we were on. I was like 297. So by the middle of next month we should be at episode 300. And I was looking at things, and uh, I was fixing some stuff with all of our other channels and everything else. And you know we're over 2,000 25 20, 2,200 subscribers on Facebook. About 300 or so on YouTube, blah, 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 you know, so on and so forth. And we've got almost 700 things on our um, SoundCloud. I think we're like 663 things because, you know, we have all of our little small podcasts. Everybody's underneath us. Um, John's one of, one of our biggest episodes was one of John's uh, minis and movies uh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Do tell. Uh, I, I will. So somebody was asking how they were doing. Uh, one of the people that uh, we distribute for was asking how they were doing and how many listens they've got. And I told them and I was just kind of playing around and looking at stuff. And I was like, oh, and then, you know, for a certain time frame, it was like this one was up and then this one was up and then this one was up. And then one of them was John's minis and movies rant or whatever was up there pretty high. I think it was like 700 or so listens. Was it the cats one? I don't remember which one it was. I just saw it on there. Huh. Uh, now I'm curious. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to go on there. So one, so people always ask why I host everything on SoundCloud because we have to pay for it. Uh, one, it lets me see where our demographic is. Two, it lets us know how many plays we're getting. It also our RSS feed from SoundCloud goes to all the other things: Spotify, iHeartRadio itunes muse on minis everything spotify so, yeah spotify everything and so it collects the data from all of those also and puts it together which is good because i don't want to go to spotify and see i mean see how many we got on spotify how many on podbean how many it just collects it all which is good because it makes it a whole lot easier you know if i can tell somebody who's like hey we don't think we're getting enough listens and i'm like oh you got and someone this weekend was like so we're getting like what couple of hundred and i'm like no you're getting about roughly 500 listens per episode and they're like wow and i'm like yeah that's the reason why i like this because you know we don't get a lot of feedback there and there's nothing wrong with this people don't have to like come and say stuff all the time we don't get a lot um of feedback on the episodes or you know how we're doing we just get to see the listens and you know the plays which is fine uh, but I mean, if someone doesn't do that and doesn't know, they're like, um, does, are people listening to me? I'm like, yeah, here, you can see for yourself. You've got, you know, in the last four days, you've had 500 listens. So that's just crazy. Uh, nerd camera's freaking out. It's not your in nerd. It's don't worry about it. 
Oh, it's one of my battle reports, actually. One of my uh, rolling dice. Oh, is it a rolling dice one? And then uh, theming and paint scheme. That's a, one of our episodes, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a rolling yeah, my dice one. It's freaking out. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a. It has to do with network stability. I'll have to it's fix like it people later. like battle reports. Well, yeah, people like battle reports. I mean, it's like you know, Captain Mizzy and I when we do ours, we're not gonna do, we're not gonna film it and show everything. We're just gonna take pictures of stages and then talk about it, because I mean, it can just take so long. So, <clears throat> oh, we also got some new things coming out. Um, Captain Mizzy and I will be doing a Relic Blade uh, battle discussion once we've painted everything. We got everything ready to go. Um, if you haven't seen us painting up, um, that'll be on there. And then um, Captain Mizzy and I are going to a comic convention. We're reporting on a comic convention um, called SoonerCon. Uh, so- sooner? Sooner. Oklahoma. Like S O. S O O N E R. Boomer Sooner. Okay. Um, and it, uh, we got press passes, so we're going to go and report on that, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, nice. And uh, we're just doing a day trip and going to report on it. It's supposed to be a big, you know, Comic Con type convention with um, cosplay and stuff like that. But uh, we wanted to do it because, I mean, they do have like a painting competition and stuff like that. Um, but I figured it'd be kind of neat. It's only like. It's only like three hours away from me, so it's a good day trip. Go there early, get there, start, do all the reporting, make all the pictures, do all the hashtagging, and then come back and then, you know, be done for the day. Um, the hashtagging. All the hashtagging. Hashtag. Uh, and then um, also Got Nerd that and I side. are going to be streaming on Wednesday night together. We're going to be painting together. Uh, with, you know, sometimes when John isn't able, you know, is, isn't working late, he'll probably jump in too, but we got to wait till John. Pick, pick me, pick me. Oh, pick me, pick me. No, pick me. Uh, nerd. Oh, how's it going? Me. John. <laughs> um, I, I work till late. I work, work late every Wednesday. Yeah. Kind of sometimes. It's an always. Gotcha. So, just so you guys know, it's an always. <laughs> Um, that's, that's our freest night for us to do things. I have things I have to do on Thursday. Nerd has something to do on Monday. I have something I do on Tuesday. Wednesday's our freest night. Um, Monday's going to become workout night. (laughs) And then, um, what else? Uh, as when we are done with Relic Blade, uh, we probably are going to do Judgment. Um, and paint up our Judgment models and do a Judgment battle discussion uh because i have like four models to paint for that um so that'll be coming around um, cool. that'll be our next one i think is judgment um but i do have uh what else um an rpg starting up this friday we're going to be creating characters doing our system zero with all newbies using the Pathfinder. Is that system. the Pathfinder? Yeah, it's the Pathfinder yep. system. Cool. Um, got them to say. <laughs> so, uh, if you doesn't know, if you play Pathfinder, it is a you know a twist on Fifth Edition D anD D. Some people think it's actually going more toward the newer edition is a little bit more towards Fourth Edition. Um, and I never played Fourth Edition, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, I would know. I, I like the way they're doing it. But they've got a free character builder app. Um, online that is really, 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 really simple and easy. And I'm like, this will be really good for, you know, brand new people to walk them through it step by step type thing. So we're going to be doing that. Um, but I, I had session two of my Dagger Heart campaign that I'm in. I'm really enjoying the system What's so far. Dagger Heart? Dagger Heart is the new RPG from Darrington Press, aka Critical Role. Oh, okay. uh, it's in beta right now, but it I'm I'm liking it. It reminds me in in a lot of ways of Blades in the Dark, and just because you use like fear and hope, and you take different like the different wounds and stuff that you would take, and it's much more role play heavy and much less combat. Gotcha. And it's all based on like D12s. The only time I th- I don't think you almost never roll a D20. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I'm in a campaign with like zombies and folks, and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, 
Other than that, um, do we have any shout outs this week, by the way? I don't think any. I didn't hear about anything. I didn't either. Me either. Oh. Didn't hear any shout outs. Uh, we got to give out, give, give the good shout outs for all of our sponsors. We got to thank Creature Caster. Uh, so response on the channel. Uh, be on the lookout. They're doing something special, I believe, in June. Uh, we'll be helping promote that. Um, and also, we'll be doing some judgment stuff. Uh, we want to thank Muse on Minis for hosting our channel. Uh, make sure you check out their page. they got some new terrain stuff coming out. We want to thank Cuttlefish Colors uh, for their paint line. If you do like some good glazing and uh, base coating colors uh, and a good plethora of spectrum, go and check them out. <laughs> A plethora. Uh, a plethora of spectrum, yes. Uh, we want to thank Turbo Dork for uh, giving us the color shifting, you know, turbo shifting and metallic paints. And we want to thank Midnight Heroes for making a good chibi game and making chibi artwork. Make sure you go check them out on all of their pages, social or otherwise. Um, everybody's always trying to make a little bit of extra money this time. So if you have a little and you can spare it, you know, go check out some of our sponsors. Um... What else? I think that's it. Let's get to the super stupid important part of our podcast. Nerd, what are you drinking? I am drinking Simply Spiked Limeade. That sounds good. Okay. It's, it's quite what delicious. It with? Vodka? I believe. I'm not surprised. It does not say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's spiked it tastes like cyanide. it tastes vodka. Yeah. Oh, the good shit. It's, it's it's spiked with arsenic. Arsenic. So I'll be dead by the end of this. Um. Okay. Uh, John, what are you drinking? Uh, I have a dark and stormy. Dark and stormy. And what's that in that again? It's a, it's a, it's a rum mule. Gotcha. They call it dark and stormy. It's a, sorry, technically it's not dark and stormy because I'm not using the official rum and the official ginger beer, but fuck off. It's a dark and stormy. <laughs> I'm rum and ginger beer and all. H2O. Um, I'm still taking, got this last bit of this sinus infection I'm trying to get over, trying to get, got all my uh, antibiotics going through my body type thing. Uh, no, Captain Mizze, I have not set up a donation code. We will talk about that in a little bit. Um, but... Um, guys, please make sure you're taking care of yourself. Please look after each other. There's a lot of crap going on that's not cool. And, um, we just got to make sure we check out and, you know, just reach out every so often. If you haven't heard from somebody in a while, even if you're just kind of friends, just like send a little quick message saying, Hey dude, you doing all right? And you'll, you know, hear something or whatever, but always check in. Out. Um, as you always as we always say, um, if you see something, say something. If you hear something, say something. And if you can do something, do something. If you can't, find somebody that will, because we got to look after each other. Cheers. 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 Um, so, uh, Captain Mizzy was talking, and um, so on the stream, we were talking about donation goals. And we usually like to do a donation, and this is not donations for us, but if you do certain things within the donation, we'll do something because we break certain barriers. Sort of like a Kickstarter donation type thing. Um, but I was trying to figure out something we could donate to, and I was thinking like local animal shelter um, type thing, which is always a good one because you know that they need you know things. Um, so we're we're gonna I'm gonna talk with the crew. We're gonna be getting into it and see if we can get. You know, like we find some good uh, nonprofits that we can donate to because, you know, this is I, I always like animal shelters because I'm a huge dog person. And, you know, a lot of these people do a lot of work for free type mm -hmm. thing. And, you mm -hmm. know, talking about doing it. But we were thinking about if we get to certain points within the donation tracker, um, we would do thing. And one of them already says that if we get to a certain goal, I would have to wear eyeliner again. Uh, which I did for one time because someone made a goal and I said I would do it and I'd, I'll wear eyeliner again. I don't know about that. So we can all wear eyeliner. <laughs> I can already see John going like, the <laughs> hell we are. 
There it is. There it is. Just the, I mean, the brain, the, the gears. It's not something I own off. or would have any idea. Also, not really comfortable with putting anything remotely sharp near my eye. It's a good yes. way for me to fucking murder somebody. <laughs> I had a bad experience. Yeah. That's fair. That's as you fair. can tell. So, John, you know, as soon as you said that, I'm like, nah, John's not in for that. <laughs> uh, but. Um, okay, I'm down for a pedicure. I just got I a need pedicure one. cookie. No, they're, they're, that you is have to give legitimately on my list. You have to give someone a pedicure. Oh, that's fun. So, but uh, we have to talk about it as a team to find out, you know, what our, what our <clears> donation, <throat> you know, goals would be. You know, if you get to this thing, we'll do this. You get to this thing, you'll do this. Um, so we'll figure it out. We don't know. Uh, it just got thrown around and I don't mind doing charity stuff. I don't mind donating money to a local animal shelter or, you know, something that's going to help, you know, around us locally. Yeah. Um, we'll have, to, we'll have to just figure out who and what we're going to do. And then our like goals along there, maybe, uh, John has to like do a video on transforming 10 of his transformers and talking about each one. I don't know. <laughs> He's got probably like 60. He's counting them up right now. I don't we'll, have 60 we'll Transformers. Have to, we'll 10's actually a taller order. How we want to celebrate episode 300. Yeah, we do have episode 300 coming up too. Um, we got to figure out how we may we may do something. Uh-oh. What if I ran a one-shot for you, Mizzy, and John? As our 300th episode? <laughs> I mean, John's in. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do I'll do. A very one-shot. uncomfortable calling himself in the third, in the third person like that. <laughs> we get we could do oops all podcast. <laughs> oops all podcast. <laughs> we we could do the thing get us a, a a two hour, you know. So we can start it. We won't we won't do a pre ramble to it. We would just do we start at six thirty. We'll have our characters made before the podcast. We'll describe them, and then we'll play till eight thirty. Yeah, so two hour podcast. Sure. One shot. All right, that's it. Nerd's got it. Nerd, you're in it's charge. the one I've run the most, so like I've got this one down. It's basically the hangover. Okay. All right, so um, we'll have to figure out how we make and how we run stuff. But nerd, you're in charge of that. Uh, okay. Which will happen probably in three weeks. You can look at dates in a row quick. <laughs> Is that the 25th when I'm going to be gone? Uh, no, look. it's the one before the 25th, the 18th. 17th. Or- 17th. Or, or, sorry, no, no 19th. I'm looking at the... So, I can just... 28th, 29th. 29th, 19th. 19th. There we go. I was looking at the wrong month. <laughs> 28th, 29th. I was looking at Thursdays for some reason. 97, yeah, I was looking at, like, Thursday, Friday also. Like, oh. Yeah, it'll be the 19th will be our 300th, and we will do a... I'm putting that on my calendar now before I forget. <laughs> so, nerd, you'll have to tell us what we need to make and how we need to make it or whatever, so... Level four, one magic, one common or uncommon magic item. And yeah, you have to look at you have to help John out. <laughs> yeah, John, are you Excuse comfortable me? with using D and D Beyond? Uh, I actually own own the D and D books. I ran a D and D game for a little bit. No, I have the books. D and D Beyond. Oh, um, I've poked a little bit. I have a login somewhere. Okay, because that's how. I have a an extension that allows you to roll directly from your D&D Beyond character sheet into roll 20. That sounds like communism, but okay. <laughs> it's been around since the pandemic. <laughs> also sounds like communism. Hey, they re- they released it in March of 2020. <laughs> so so Sorry. I'm not allowed to play a bard is what you're telling me though, right? Oh, if you want to play a bard... <laughs> No, it, it's pu- published classes, subclasses, and races only. Are you are you gonna are you gonna set up a Beyond Twenty for us so we can log in? in yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. All right. So there you go, guys. Our three hundredth episode is going to be a one shot ran by Nerd uh, with uh, Captain Mizzy, John Gonzo, and uh, we will see. What, I'll have to set up a whole new screen and see what's going on. Um, and are you going to do this on? Are you gonna are you gonna do it on roll twenty or are we just using yeah D D beyond? So you'll have to all right, so you may have to set up the screen. Um and you may have to stream it. That's fine. I may have to I we'll have to figure it out because I'll have to figure, uh, I can get the screen for I can get it all. You always gotta get together 
We'll get together yeah, quickly. Yeah, you can just stream your end. Yeah. That way you can do it. And so we'll yeah, do that, it. We, that we know... may not everybody seen all of my little creatures and stuff that's on the GM yeah, layer. Yeah, we see what Gonzo sees. Yep. Got it. All right. So there it is, episode 300. Uh, we will do a one-shot nerd running, and Gonzo, John, and Captain Newsy will be playing. Woo-woo. So maybe cameras won't freeze either. Well, if you don't need cameras. Uh, yeah, I mean, with my machine, it probably... I, I've had it's more me. Here. Yeah. But... I think it's more when I'm streaming Mizzy that the camera freezes because of Rule Twenty, uh, and, and this is and that's mostly because of dynamic lighting in Rule Twenty. Yeah, it uses up all my resources and freezes my camera. All right, there we go, episode three hundred. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get to our topic because we're like seven, we're at seven twenty. Um, we need our topic. So last week we touched on creating an epic campaign and playing an epic campaign and what makes a campaign epic. Now we're going to talk about ending a campaign epic because, you know, when do you end it? How do you end it? Why do you end it? You know, so on and so forth. And while we're talking about that, I'm going to switch over to the paint cam and uh, start working on my one of my miniatures for Relic Blades. So switching over to that, let's get this going. John, when do you end oh, a campaign? Oh, uh, well, I mean, if you have planned a campaign to have an end point, you'll know when that is. Because you have your outline of what's going to happen, and you know your players are getting close, and you can start planning at that point. Correct. If you've got it written out and done, you're you're good. And, yeah, if, you, if you're running, like, a set campaign, you've got it. Or if you're running pre-made campaigns. Like, for example, when I ran the D&D 4th edition, all their pre-made campaigns. I kind of knew when the end was coming because we were in the last module. You know, kind of <laughs> like, hey, look, the end is nigh. Um, but the hardest would be um, if you are running a not, you know, pre-planned campaign. If you're running a theoretically endless sandbox one, the hardest thing is when to end that and how to end that, I think. I mean, we could start with the with the pre-planned one. It's pretty easy. You should have your your plan, but you need to be willing to, you know, tweak it a bit based on player ideas. And if you've done it right, your players will know it's ending, and hopefully, they're coming up with ideas to end it epically too. My nerves probably got more <laughs> experience with that than me. I've just had uh, not one really. Me. I've either had like. I've either played in pre-written campaigns or my last homebrew one I ran, like, they got to a high level, they beat a big-ass boss, and then I just kind of wrapped it up from there. Yeah, just we did that. Uh, going for two and a half years. Yeah, when we did I, all the D&D 4th edition ones, it was sort of, you know, we saw it come in, final confrontation with Orcus. We did a little wrap-up afterwards. That was sort of easy, though, because, I mean, we had thoroughly, I don't want to say broken, but let's just say bent that system enough. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so for those, it's pretty easy. You'll see it come in. You want to have a little bit of wrap up so people know, so that they feel like their characters are actually done. Um. Yeah, you know, wrap, wrap up, up or, or walk into the or in the horizon. Walk into the horizon, absolutely. But yeah. you also want to make sure that you finished any of the storylines that the characters have created themselves. Because if there's been, you know, some of them that's created themselves, they're gonna be like, Well, what happened to, you know, Billy Bob whenever I saved him or, you know, so on and so yeah. forth. But that should be done as you go. You should be keeping track of those plot lines and knowing uh, you know, well, basically when to hold them and when to fold them. Yeah, but that's something that sometimes, you need to be making sure you're paying attention to, not just the main yeah. plot line. Yeah, as you go. And sometimes players will start something and it won't be um, something you want to run with. It's not something you're going to want to complete and you're going to be like, that's ah, not really pertinent. That's like that's like an extra side quest side quest from this particular uh, uh, Thing. Like if it was a role play, you know, if it's a JRPG, that's like the most side quest you have side quests. Sometimes you don't need that, but you need to make it clear as you're going that you don't intend to wrapping that up. It's not, you know, you're going to let that thread die. 
Um, but you should be aware of all the cool side quests that are going on, all the goals people have. Um, so you can make sure that they can accomplish them if at all possible. But don't be afraid if they had a goal and they didn't do enough to achieve the goal. Don't hesitate to let them fail. Yeah. Failure is an option, no matter what everyone tells you. Like, there is binary. You either fail or you succeed. So it's always there as an option. And honestly, sometimes that'll leave them there. If you want... This sounds kind of harsh. Sometimes you need to teach them. That it's not just going to be handed there in a silver platter. Like, here's everything all wrapped up in a nice package. Sometimes it can be like, hey, you uh, you didn't do enough. You could also do, you know, if it's going to be a wrap-up. It doesn't have to be like an epic wrap-up, too. You could do like, oh, you know, remember John? Well, here's the stinger of, you know... The after credit scene of what happened to that town that y'all decided not to help and rescue or whatever. Oh, I wouldn't be... do that. I wouldn't do that. I, I don't have a problem with it as long as it's... You oh, know, no, that's... And ending on a downer is... No, 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 I'm not saying a downer. That. I'm just saying, you know, if something didn't get cleared up, you don't have to make a whole adventure or, you know, a you know a 10-day, you know, multi-thing, multi but wrap it up somehow. Yeah. You don't have to have the scourging of the Shire to end your campaign. Correct. That's that's what I'm talking about. It doesn't have to be something big and fancy, just something that, you know, a stinger type thing. But doesn't like it doesn't have to be a downer. And that's not what I Yeah, I would doing. definitely advise against downer. That's a that's a good that's you, you will attain your campaign from epic to the exact I mean epic still, but to be more infamous than famous. <laughs> and you don't want that. And honestly, you know, it's just not a way you want things to end. I mean, let's touch your goal going in. If they go in knowing, like, if you got the hardcore players, you know, like those OSR guys, they they would be fully cognizant of the fact that they could fail and shit could go sideways and they could, the world could end. And, you know, hey, that's an option. Or if you're playing a pre-campaign uh, pre for another campaign you played where there was some cataclysmic event and something bad needs to happen, maybe it's going to happen regardless. Yeah. You just can't always get Brendan Lee Mulligan to run it for you. Um, but yeah, so you should really have an idea of what your ending is. You know, like I said, if you if you're if you're playing an epic campaign, you're going to have an idea of what your ending is going to be. Be working towards that, and you need to make sure, even if you have to do it on you know as a meta thing, like hey guys, we're getting close to the end. So you should start uh, thinking of things like that. You know. Uh, the last one I did that had a, an ending point in mind was the uh, uh, Three Gnomes and a Half Giant. We, as we got to the end, they knew it was getting close to the end. There was no delusion in their head. And, you know, they 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 played for the win and were okay with the consequences since half the party died. And they were okay with it. That's always... And if you've made... I was going to say the, 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 uh, the party death... Um... I don't ever have a problem with a character dying as long as it's not a space cow type thing, you know, where it's, you know, anything. But especially at the very end, if someone dies, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's great. You know, if it's done in the, the last heroic battle, you know, yeah. type thing. That's, Everyone's that's okay going great. out like Boromir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no one wants to go out like fucking uh, the other, the wood elf dude who got fucking murked in the two towers. No one wants oh, to do that. yeah. Solomon, no, is that him? That's the big dude. I forget his name. Been a while, but you know, you need to be careful of that no one wants to. I mean, and sometimes it happens. You know, sometimes the character will die, and you've got a chance to introduce something else um, in there. Um, and honestly, if you're going to do that, and depending on how, let's say, deadly you want the game to be, be prepared to have something for that player to do. No one wants to sit around the table for an hour or two while everyone else finishes up while they're doing nothing. Oh yeah. So, hey, have an idea of what they can do. Let, let, let them roll for the monsters. I've had that. Something like that. Have them, have them, you, you know, do something. Uh, if you've got NPCs who are fighting with you, let them run the NPCs or something. Just have, have an idea. It's going to help a lot. Um, or have effects. If you, if you've got any sort of meta effects from luck or fate type of things, Make sure you've got one that would let someone continue fighting till the end and then drop dead at the end. That is what I did for not brush to Dave's character. I'm like, look, if you, you know, you're gonna do this if you fail your death check and it's gonna be significant. You're gonna die, die. And he's like, that's fine. 
And, you know, sometimes that's the appropriate answer for that. And it's okay. And by letting it be heroic and appropriate, you'll get you'll get that epicness, let's be honest. Because that's sort of the thing a lot of games are missing. People get attached to their characters and they're going to want to, we want to do a spin-off. And yeah, but not always is that the right thing. Know if you want the option of a spin-off or not beforehand or by the time you're getting there. So you know you can you can play appropriately. Yeah, you don't want to, and like you can leave it on a cliffhanger, but it's the end of the campaign, so you want to have some sort of resolution. I would only cliffhanger it if if everyone's going off for a bit and you plan on continuing it. Or a yeah. future generation will come and do it, or you know, you're playing the kids of the kids of the kids, or no, yeah. if it's the kids of the kids of the kids, I'd still want to have a resolution resolution for that. It's only if they're gonna if we're like okay we you know it's it's Ren Fair season we're not playing for two months or whatever let's uh we'll end in a cliffhanger and pick it back up after that that kind of thing. Um, and then the harder would of course be if you have a sandbox slash ongoing campaign and no one when to end those. Because often yeah. those just sort of stop suddenly and no one was expecting it. You know. Yeah. It's not much you can do. Sometimes players move on and stuff. Maybe sometimes you stop for Ren Fair season and then suddenly no, they just don't come back because life. Or sometimes you write yourself into a hole. Like, or into a corner. And... Yeah, yeah. That's a problem. Been there. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do if you write yourself in a corner. Um, just, you know, maybe hit your character, see your character, see what your players are doing as far as ideas, and let them get you out of it. Remember, cooperative means you can steal any ideas they have. Be like, that was my plan all along. <laughs> oh yeah, like one of my players going into the thieves guild, going into the thieves guild, joking that it was going to be a rave, so I made it a rave. <laughs> Yeah, that makes them feel good. Like, oh my god, I'm I'm in tune. Yee. But yeah, so and also sometimes you'll get to a point in the game you'd be like, and this would be the perfect ending. Sometimes you just got to. Yeah. Just like if it would be the absolute perfect ending, just hit it, just just end it. You know, give them a lot of wrap up, uh, you know, eulogy, like yeah, is this, 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 and this happens in the short term. <clears throat> and then, you know, go on. You know, we, we sometimes get stuck in the keep and go in a campaign when it should have ended. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm honestly struggling with that right now because I'm running two campaigns and I'm struggling with one way more than the other. And debating on whether or not to keep go push through and keep going or call it. Yeah, it's it's tough sometimes. Oh, you also got to read the room a bit with that. Sometimes, like the new hotness is out or some new things out, and they really want to try it. And you've heard them heard the rumblings. Give them a chance. Yeah. Or in my case, like I know the new Turtles game is coming out <laughs> later this year, and we're only playing GI Joe until it comes out. Like we know that. Uh, Xenoboy yeah. says, uh, "Law when the characters come up with better ideas because it sounds great and it leads to a different game." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's part of the cooperative. You know, they come up with good ideas and they feel great when you're using their ideas. Um, on Michael voice says, "There's a gun in the box." Sure, you have no idea what this contraption is, but it's made from rare metal that you can melt down. Um, yeah, there's these. You just got to be ready to sort of uh, wing it. I mean, plans are all good, well and good, but sometimes you've got to be ready to wing it. Yeah. Uh, so the other says, I want to play, play a Transformers game and can't wait for the Combiners book to come out. Yeah. That system's pretty good. It's the same one for G.I. Joe. So I, I, it's got a couple potential broken bits I need to look at some more, um, but I, it, it's pretty good. And honestly, certain games, like a Transformers game, I feel, is much more uh, scripted, open. You've got 
not necessarily a dedicated arc, but you have like a vague, it's a battle, you know, Transformer, you know, Autobots versus Decepticons. Um, G.I. Joe is set up more as a mission by mission one. So when I want to end it, they send a mission and, and we're done. It's okay. Uh, it's an interesting thing because there's not a lot of like necessarily character development in it because of the way it is. Feels a bit like Shadowrun like that, where it was always mm. a little, little less. You occasionally get those ones. You know, it's like a like a TV episode. You occasionally get those character episodes, but mostly it's just, you know, mission of the week. So. And those are tough. Like, if it's mission of the week, it's tough to, I mean, they're set up inherently to not end. Play like, as long as you want. Yeah. So, those would be the hardest to end. And those you generally just end. Maybe someone does something impressive, like impressive, and you can, uh, you know, maybe the, for Shadowrun, maybe you get that one last run that's going to be super hard, and like they're going to make enough money to, uh, you know, for retire. that to, to, to retire right. finally and go buy that yacht and sail the Caribbean like I always wanted to. Or you can buy the farm, literally or figuratively. <laughs> Um, that's probably the best one in the military game. Of course, guys get promoted and transferred out. The Unicron shows up and eats the planet. Well, yeah, that ends it sometimes. But this, do you want to do that? That's nice. That's a downer. You gotta be careful about that. I have a family member calling. I'll be right back. Sure. So yeah, so you just sort of have to for for the ongoing campaigns, you kind of got to play it by ear, figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. Based off your players, you know? Yeah, like I said, some of them you already know because it's, hey, you know, it's the, the final battle type thing or yeah. whatever. You're, you're but, going but against the big bad guy. But a lot you don't, you know. Maybe it's just like you guys are tired for a bit. You have every intention to coming back. You may not. Let me warn you, you're probably not coming back in the same way. No. It's there, There's a saying, you can never, come, never go back. It's true. You can't. Your best bet is to take the outline of that and go on with something new. Some of the characters maybe transfer over. You know, we've done that in the past, but people always have new ideas for new characters. And sometimes some people are always uh, are, are, are fixated on that one character because it just speaks to them, you know. So, and that's the one you want to be careful with as well. When you're ending a campaign, if you've got someone who really, really obviously loves their character, um, um, and like obviously would be fucking broken up if they die. You might want to make that person live. <laughs> uh, Zenderboy says sometimes a social contract is we play until we lose interest and play a new plow comes or game. Okay, poker, board games, like to start a new. Yep, you gotta do that. You know, I'm fun. It's, it's it's the social contract is you know you do have a little bit of a responsibility to try and show up and play with everyone. You know because it's a collaborative game, but. Correct. You don't keep going after your after your the obvious stopping point. It's a lot of the same brown on that icons. Are you gonna change yeah, any of it up? I got a lot of highlighting I need to do. <clears throat> so I was looking at like the bag and pouch, and I'm like, that could be a different brown, but I'd probably is that stick done too? Yeah, the stick is actually it's actually a, a dark, dark brown. I haven't highlighted it. Yeah, I can it. tell it's a totally different color. But it's sort of like the color I would have painted the uh the belt with the pouches and all to show like a different type of leather. Yeah, I'm gonna maybe go. I don't know. The this... I'd go super dark with those. Maybe even like a Rhinox hide, scorched brown type of color. Hold on, I got or... the, the straps. The straps I'm going to do with this little light tan color. Okay, that could work too. Yeah. That way it'll it'll stand out a little bit more. But yeah, so. As we said, the epic games are pretty easy. You sort of see it coming. You just got to make sure you're you're reading the room for the resolutions, and you've got everything ready to go. Um, sometimes you might you see the ending coming and go, "Oh, wait, we're not quite ready for that." Well, you got to back up and punt. You got to do whatever you need to do beforehand. Whatever needs to be resolved, get it resolved. Or Set so off with the fact it's not going to be resolved. I mean, that's an option as well. And then for the uh, 
uh, sandbox ones, just sort of, uh, if you see the good ending point strike, um, if you see it coming enough in advance, you can talk to your players about it. Because they may not be, I mean, and you have to look at your mental health too as a GM. Like sometimes you're like, I'm fucking done with this campaign. So you can say like, hey guys, uh, let's uh, end this campaign. And, you know, you can be nice initially. And if they give you any pushback, like, well, keep in mind, I'm out of ideas about fucking done with it. So what are we going to do? You know, I know you want everyone to have fun as a GM, but sometimes you're just done. You're like, I don't know where to go with this anymore. It's, you know, like we had one we were doing that was a old uh, D&D 3.5 and it was high level. And just like, guys, we're, we're wrapping this because I can't spend the time to fucking create the monsters for you to fight every fucking week. Every it's just too much. Like it became the only thing I did. And sure, they had fun, but man. Again, it's, it's collaborative. You've got to be looking at what you're doing, too. And a lot of people like to forget that. Like, oh, hey, you know, it's important. Your mental health, your having fun and everything as well. What? You can't just worry about that. I mean, I know, right? Crazy. <laughs> a lot of people don't. I mean, and I'm sure they do. The the old school players and the old the people that you know have been running a long time know that it's actually a, quite a bit of work that you have to do mm -hmm. uh, as a GM. It's not just you know looking at stuff. And there's a way to mitigate it. Like I said, by you know you bought a pre made game or whatever, but that's still you've got to keep track of a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Even in and we start having so many abilities that you're like. Just trying to keep track of. Like, yeah. if anything, it's the thing that makes... Uh, it, it is maybe D&D's biggest problem is high-level campaigns get to be a lot of work. It's one of the things where I always found something like uh, Champions of Heroes to be better because it's not like things just get more powerful. It's all based off the same scaling and points. So things don't generally get maybe just some numbers are bigger you know it's not just like oh you know this monster's got like three different special abilities and is only damaged by you peeing on it from 20 feet away yeah the trask I mean, yeah sure are, do you do damage to trask by peeing on it no yeah i didn't think so i punched a dragon to death once that was fun that sounds great <laughs> It was pretty good. Uh, the only dragon I want to have is when there was a dragon and he had this stun ability, but uh, one of the player characters had a found an item in that module that whenever they're stunned, the enemy has to make this huge save or is stunned as well. So literally it was stunned, stunned. All right, so watch next. So every time the PCs got stunned, the dragon got stunned, and it was just a watch. No one got extra actions. <laughs> it was quite stupid and funny. Uh, Michael, Arnold Michael Lewis says, my players are notorious for forgetting what they have. Both items and clues. Yes, that's tough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get a little... I don't know. I'll poke them a little Like, make sure you remember your stuff. You know? It's, I can't do everything for you guys. You need to remember... Yeah. Like, I'm not about taking all the notes in the universe anymore, but I'll take notes of important stuff. Yeah. I, and that's one of the issues that I come across with one of my parties is they don't take notes or take very, like, unimportant notes. And, yeah. Like, what, I hate, I hate to say this, I have one group that's, like, way more invested than the other, than the other group. And <sighs> it's very obvious, like, some of them I can't even get a hold of outside of game time. And so that makes that, it really hard as a DM. And I think you need to, uh, the, in that case, you need to, I mean, you got to tailor the game for the players. One people obviously want the not real continuity aside from going from point A to point B and point B to point C down the line. Yep. You know, they, they want the, the episodic version. That's one of the things I love about um, the big edition of champions was the, fourth edition which is the big blue book 
Mm -hmm. um, and in the back of it, it had all these GM tools, and it was like, here's your campaign sheet. What kind of campaign are you running? Episodic or serial? I'm like, this is all the sh sheet you fill out. And if you do that with your with your players, session zero, you can you can have it know like, oh hey, I don't want to keep track. You know, my life's crazy. I don't want to have to keep track of stuff between game sessions. I'm sorry. Great. No, don't be sorry. Just let us know in advance and we can make sure we're playing the right game. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the kind of game where <clears throat> you're more likely to just end it when it feels right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to worry. It's like, eh, we're just going to end it. Let's play something else. And especially if you're, if you were started under the idea that they're going to pay a lot more attention than they are. Uh, yeah, because I was running two serial uh, campaigns, and this one, I think it's going to have to get converted into episodic. Yeah, either, either you convert it, or you go, hey, this is a good ending point for this, we're going to do something a little more loose. Probably a better word for it. Heart of Michael, yet they remember the plus one skeleton, exactly. Or the but, meth skeleton, as they called it in one in one session that we had. I I described this this icy skeleton covered in blue crystals, and they're just like, oh, it's a meth skeleton. And I'm just like, oh god. Sort of like the heroin pissing dinosaur. <laughs> what? I, I was thinking of the the colored water elemental that uh, flowed up out of the ground into the glass armor, and then a face appeared. Oh yeah! So um, there was a someone did that. All eyes like that was legend. That was That's fucking fantastic. Legend. That was amazing. There was a creature in Exalted, which was originally done by White Wolf, um, and you played pretty much gods. And it was like a Dragon Ball Z episode. You could pick up trees and hit people with you know trees. It's it's a super powerful campaign. Really really fun. I enjoyed the shit out of it. But there was a dinosaur that when it and it was and it was like a dinosaur and its piss was heroin and we went to a town and they had one chained up and we're using it as you know a drug and collecting it i was like okay we never knew about it and you know it was just interesting but yeah a heroin pissing dinosaur that's kind of on brand for white wolf yeah. at a certain point <laughs> their shit was a little nuts yeah exalted was a fun game though by the way <clears throat> i enjoyed the shit out of that campaign that was a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure it came out in my I don't like White Wolf face. Uh, uh, the they... newest edition. And it's, it's a lot of fun. You get a lot of cool stuff. You're oh. super, super powerful because you're, you're children's of gods and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That reminds oh, me of the game Scion that came out. Very much similar. Yeah. Except for it, this was a fantasy setting, not a... Uh, a... Uh, Modern day setting. Same concept. All right. Sorry, Michael Boy. What they did forget was that the fact that Skeleton was all was holding a key. Yes. This Captain Izzy says Zedish has a plan that involves peaches, quote quotation marks, create peaches for Renrish, so I can get to that opportunity to make great, assuming vampires are like me first. Then Art says, I got a crew nearby cooking up zombies to turn their ashes into a magic drug. And see, this is where players cannot be left with their own devices. Sometimes they just get a little crazy. We had one where they were in a yeah, elven town in a forest and they were worried about undead coming. So the artificer who had made up, you know, firearms in a non-firearms campaign, just fine. There's same rules as crossbows and all. I didn't care. Yeah. Um, but he also was like, well, we're going to take this ale and we're going to have the priest bless it and we're going to put it in barrels around so we can shoot that and make it explode into flaming holy liquid. Okay. That was their plan. In a forest. Did a forest catch fire? Never got to that point. I actually didn't intend to have a horde of undead. They were just being paranoid. I'm sorry. I hadn't originally planned for a horde of undead. At that point, I'm like, well, kind of fucking have to at that point, don't I? Like when they see some undead and they start planning for a horde of undead and you weren't planning on it, I'm like, oh shit, I guess now we're planning on it. Have you ever had players just nope, like the entire party just like nope oh, yeah. out of a situation in a game where they're just like, oh, this room's too spooky. Nope. Yep. And you're just like, but there's plot in here. Uh. My, my players are braver than that. They don't generally know by the stuff like that. Yeah, you, For the best. You luckily. know I don't nope. And then I'll just like move it to a different room if I have to. 
Yeah. Depends on what it is. If it's like bugs, yeah. if it's if it's a bonus thing, if they know if they were no bad of it, I'd be like, hey, you missed it. Sorry. Yeah. You know? Like I can understand. Like I accidentally unleashed a spider on a player with a, with arachnophobia. Yeah. They noped out of that room. That makes sense. But when the entire party goes, nope, we don't want to go here. This looks stupid or this looks scary. And I'm just like, come on. I put all this work into this and you guys are just going to, nope. You go somewhere else. Just make it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the hard one. You have to decide what you're going to do when they, if they were to totally avoid something you're supposed to. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you're just like, all right, I'll, I'll back up and punt. Yeah. I'm. J- it, it, it's trying to figure out what interests the party. And I think that's what I'm struggling with because, like, certain things seem to grab their attention, but then the other things that I've been building, like, they don't seem to care as much. So I'm struggling. Yeah. Well, like I said, like, so, like, if you're trying to make a epic campaign and they're not, and they they're expecting it, but they're not interested in the plot line. Move on. I don't know what you do then. Yeah. It's tough. Like, luckily, my players tend to just go, like, they sort of see, like, oh, this is the overarching plot we're going to do. So they just sort of fucking accept it and just try to make the most of it. You know, I, my, my current group of players to sort of go out of their way to make the things work, which yeah. is helpful. They won't do things, like, completely out of character, but they'll try and find ways to make their character. And that's sort of a thing. We had a discussion on at that lunch you know, about how much of a problem a chaotic evil character player is. And I'm like, her character is I'm like, actually, the lawful good character is more of a problem to a party. Yeah. Like, people forget that. Like, he, he literally will not do I played Paladin as lawful good, and I'm like, literally, I'm like, no, we're not doing that. He's like, well, we voted. That's cool. I don't actually care about your vote. You, know, you guys have the moral flexibility to make a vote. I have, this is what I'm doing. You can either be on board or... Fuck right off. I don't care. Be gay, you cry. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that's that's the Paladin problem. That's why, you know, back in Paladins had a lot of bad rap. Justifiable bad rap, let's be honest. I'm going to be there playing you know. my first Paladin coming up, but I, I, I decided to throw the archetype on its head and play a horny Paladin. Right. Like, that's the thing people forget is that Paladins are still warriors of their gods, and I, I think they've they've backed off. Like back in the day, it was lawful good. You're the exemplar of like, but that. What if you you know god of fucking war? He wants you to murder shit. Yeah, they've they've changed it so you can be just whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I got around that by being being the the paladin of the god of justice. So I don't really care about law. I care about justice. You know, when the one town's like, we're going to make you do this. You're blackmailing me to do this. Oh, no, motherfucker. It's time to die. That caused problems again. But, you know, that's, that's it's an interesting, interesting conundrum for a party to have. You know, when they, they're sorry about the chaotic evil player, but the chaotic player can do whatever the fuck they want. That's sort of the point of chaotic evil. Literally do whatever the fuck you want. It's not like they can't follow laws. They're just like, laws are dumb. I don't want to follow them. Well, they just can if they need to. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. We had a player playing a paladin and got he got all the domes, had a spaz because he was not in charge of the party because he was a paladin. Yeah, you should not let the paladin be in charge of the party. Yeah. Well, actually, having the paladin in charge of the party solves the problem of the lawful goodness because your party is now lawful good. I don't know what you were planning on doing, but it solves the problem. I'm of the opinion nowadays, regardless how much I enjoy them, just don't let, just don't be, play paladins like that. You know, it's, I'd rather you have the thieving, murdering, backstabbing son of a bitch, because he can do teamwork. He's He's got the moral flexibility to do whatever the party needs. Oh, we're going to be good in two shoes? I can be good in two shoes. I don't necessarily like it, but I can do it. I've got no moral quandaries. Yep, it uh, serves my needs of having friends around. That's a thing, yeah, that's probably a whole other discussion, but hopefully you get long enough in a campaign where that becomes something you have to look at. So I think to finish up the topic, if you're planned and you've got an epic campaign, you should have an idea when you're getting close to the end. 
and you should be able to set up to finish all the plot lines you need to, and then end it. Um, and if you're a ongoing campaign, just suddenly at an end, potentially at an ending point, just wait for that perfect ending point, seize it, and talk to your players and go, hey, we're, we're going to end this. Yeah. And then give them a suitable, like, final battle, like, solve all the solve all the outstanding plot lines that you want to. You know, if you've got, like, villains who are recurring, and you're like, we can solve this real quick. Sort of aim for an ending point for all the, the, the big egregious plot lines. Don't solve everything, but, like, all the big ones. You know, if Dr. Destroyer's coming around being a pain in the ass, go finish the whooping on Dr. Destroyer and then go from there. Other than that, sometimes it's just going to end without you wanting it to. Without you really knowing, suddenly it just ends. Super Bear did that. We went on a hiatus and have not come back from hiatus. I do not believe we will be coming back from hiatus. It's been a while. Well, yeah, it's been years. Yeah. Pre COVID. We went from uh, Renfair season into the holidays into COVID. And I like it. Uh, but, uh, the older they get, the more I hate alignment. Yes, Andrew Lord, I agree. Alignment had its place. And actually, it's plenty good for the uh, the the old school gamers, old school rule guys, OSR guys, because they don't make characters. They make characters. And alignments are very good for making characters. You know, if someone says, I'm a chaotic evil fighter. I'm like, oh, I got an idea what you are. You are the win at all costs, sand in the face, you know, sneaky tricks fighter. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the more you get it, the more you realize alignment is an un, almost unnecessary restraint on how people act. I mean, every party's, like, every party I've ever played in, our alignment overall is just chaotic stupid. Which is better than lawful dumb, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> and way, way better. Both are way better than neutral, than, than neutral boring. Yeah. There was like Dragon Magazine did like, this whole thing of all like all these alternate alignments and chaotic, stupid, and lawful dumb were both ones of them. Um, part of the group where the guy was playing a paladin, throw the rogues were bad and like no, kind of good. I'm not evil, exactly. Fuck around and find out. Yeah, I'm busy. To find out. Chaotic snacking. I mean, kind of more like chaotic entitled. Oh, no, that was a that was a Dimension Twenty one. That was a Dimension Twenty clip. That sounds like something out of Dimension Twenty. <laughs> it was the uh, the guy playing Pinocchio. He was chaotic entitled. I I watch all their clips on YouTube because they're just like the short clips are just so funny. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They are. If you're ever feeling down, just fucking find some Dimension Twenty clips. They're probably gonna brighten your day. Or just Brendan Lee Mulligan being chaotic and evil. Or game changer ones, just little skits at a game. Good. Oh my um, god! Make some noise. Yes, just just check out some of their, their clips. They're just they're chaotic funny. Karen. Oh god, no! That's the worst alignment. The absolute Waffle worst. Karen. They can both die in fires. <laughs> the same fire for all I care, but they wouldn't be happy about it. One of them would want their own fire. You're not wrong. Yes. So there you go. There are some ideas. If you have any, always reach out to us with any questions you got. We're happy to help out. If you got any topics for role playing, hit us up. As Gonzo said last time, we're all really into it and happy to do it. I've got decades of experience. Ditto. Got about six years. I'm not going to do the math. It's, it's been a while. Like, well, I started, I started, I didn't start running fifth ed until I started watching campaign two of critical role. That's how I know when. So, cause that was uh, what prompted me to want to DM. I'm like, okay, this system looks fun. I can get into this. I ran most of the games starting in elementary school. Ditto. It's, I mean, it was always good when you found a game, you didn't have to run. You're like, yeah. But I am kind of the forever DM. Same. 
Same, 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 right. same, same, same. Before we media, I need to pee a lot. So while John's doing that, I'm going to try to finish up this model real quick. And just get the last bit of stuff. <clears throat> that I have to wait on. Oh, crap. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's getting stuff done and getting your campaign over with. It's, it's, it's all speculative of what you're doing, in my opinion. Yeah. It all depends on your campaign. Are they about to pit the big bad guy? Or is everybody just done? Because if everybody's just done, easy. Let's go to a different campaign. Yeah. Do a different thing. Almost done with this model. That's not going to work. But, oh man, there's that professionalism we were talking about. <laughs> I'm back. Yes, Cookie. Riffs and TMNT. Well, I mean, it wasn't. Hi, back. I'm nervous. Riffs. It was TMNT. Riffs didn't come out until I was well out of elementary school. Model done, for the most part. I gotta wait till it dries, and then I can dry brush it, and then put the flowers on it. Yeah, yeah. Banyan Rifts is a good setting and idea. It's just a really, 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 really. And no offense to anyone who loves a shitty system. It's the definition of wow. All these great ideas it just doesn't fucking work. Does not. Does not. But in another system, it would work really well. I will also say, my heart goes out to uh, Kevin Ciambata from Palladium Books. He has had a fuck of a life. I think his uh, partner just passed. I mean, like like a life partner, not business partner. Mm. And like years ago, he had that guy in Bezlin from him. He does not. No man deserves that shit. Well, one man deserves that shit. Maybe two. You have to you who think of who that is. Um, how many media things we got to talk about today? John, how many you got? Uh, I mean, multiple. Okay. I got a few. Nerd said she I has 17, one. so we're good on that, Toe. It'll be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about something that's Ass. typically on topic right now. Um, so I finally got and finished reading all the Pathfinder rules and got into it. I like it better than 5th edition. I'm going to say that now. Uh, I like the rule system a little bit better. Adds a little bit more customization. Adds a little bit more uh, things that I like that are in my genre of games. Uh, I also like the, the races, which is, you can have that in any of them. There's no reason that you can't bring, you know, a fungal type creature into 5th edition D&D. &D. Uh, but I don't have to do anything with it. Um, I like the way the hell skills are set up. I've created a bunch of different characters, a bunch of different ways. Uh, created a, a few NPCs. Uh, it's not a rating. Um, but I've never done Pathfinder, uh, but I like I like Pathfinder more than I like Fifth Edition right now. Um, That's I've just seen not it. really a surprise. It's, no, it's a level of advanced more. Yes, which is sort of the idea because D and D wants to be anyone can get into it. Yeah. It's the gateway role playing game. But I mean, I, I was, so far I'm liking it. I'll uh, like I says once we get into the game. We're not recording uh, the game that's coming up. Um, but I'll definitely talk about it because it'll be kind of interesting and fun to hear newbies um, to do it. We might record when we do TMNT, but we didn't with GI Joe just because oh, we weren't sure where it was going to go. I also want to play TMNT because I want to play my Porcupine again. I liked him. So, um, into, into Pathfinder, liking it. Um, I could see it definitely it could be a good one for you know starting people. Um, nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm waiting for a couple other books to come out. Uh, a new um, GM screen they got coming out, which I'm okay with. And then there's like a, a core, uh, uh, another player core book that's supposed to add some new things. And I'm like, I'll pick it up just because it sounds like pretty cool. So, John, what's your first I mean, media thing? Oh, sorry. My first, no, that's fine. I would say we all like splat books. That's, you know, yes. we're, we're 80s role players. Splat books were the thing. And. Honestly, playing books did the best Ooh. version of them because it's like, here's a seven dollar splat book. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm broke, but I can afford a seven dollar splat book. That's my shit. Yeah. Hey, Midnight Harris, how's it going? 
Uh, so my first is uh, I'm going to tell these uh, in order. So I uh, that I watched them. I watched the new reimagining of Roadhouse. Okay. Jay Jonah. All right. Oh, okay. That's on my list. It is on mine. Um, so I'm going to start with the only unforgivable negative in it. Okay. Conor McGregor cannot fucking act. No. Who? And I'm not talking. Conor McGregor is playing the bad, playing oh. the bad guys. He, yeah. He, he like, and not like you know. Oh, hey, he's like a wrestler from the '80s in a movie. No, no, he's really, really cannot act. No. It is bad. Anything else in the movie? Any of the other issues? And there are a plenty of issues, but they're all minor. You could forgive, but just it is every time you're like, oh fuck, and someone can he shut his mouth? Can someone shut his mouth, please? Um, it's got a basic. It, it's it's the same basic idea, and some of the details are used, but it's not the same movie really at all. Um, they have it. It is kind of like ninety schlock, but is done in the twenty twenties. Okay. So this is not like say like a bad thing. If you like a standard nineties action movie with all the standard tropes that come with it. You'll like it. Some of the fights are good, solid. His background is interesting and a good update. Okay. Um, some of the parts, you have some good secondary characters and all, but it just doesn't have. It never quite hits like the first one, pun intended. You know, they don't have as many likable things. Um, the fights were, were the early fights were really good. Midnight Heroes. I don't like the later fights. Later fights were a little much. They got to be a little, hmm, a little egregious, let's say. But overall, I mean, it's it's giving you my definition of a two point five. It's perfectly fine. Some people are gonna like it more. Some are gonna like it less. But I I don't really foresee me rewatch. I mean, I might rewatch it like a couple years from now. <laughs> but. Uh, it, it doesn't have enough going for it to rewatch it. The fights aren't good enough to watch it just on that. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of the heart of the uh, first one. So, But still, you know, it's a serviceable action movie. I'm very glad they did not put it out in the theaters. It would have failed horrifically in the theaters. It would have gotten terrible reviews in the theater. It is not a theater movie. But it, as a like direct-to-streaming, direct-to-cable type of dealio, it's fine. It's... It's better than a lot of that direct to cable shit that came out in the nineties. <laughs> Jake John Hall's good. He's good in everything. I'm gonna I'll say it. He is just one of those actors you know he's gonna bring the quality in it. And most of the other actors are solid. I don't know if they're amazing, but they're all solid. I don't I don't really like his love interest as an actress. She's been in the Suicide Squad as Rat Catcher. She's in some other things. I just don't I just don't like her. She doesn't have the charisma that grabs me. Okay. You know, maybe it's her act. It's just something, you know, it's just not quite hit. But, hey, you know, uh, the bad guy family dynamic did not work for me. Yeah, yeah, they, it, there's a lot of ideas they tried. I think it needed one more good pass with a, uh, uh, someone to punch up the script and then someone to kick Conor McGregor out and get anyone else to be the bad guy. Anyways, uh, Nerd, what's your one? Uh, I went to go see the new Ghostbusters movie, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and it had some great callbacks to the originals, but not, like, directly. Like, unless you knew the old ones well, you may not catch some of them, like a single pan shot up over the face of the lion at the library or <laughs> in New York and stuff like that. It's like, things that they did in the originals... Not necessarily lines, but like, <clears throat> like actual shots for the movie, or like. So it'd be one you like might notice if you do a rewatch and watch them all in row. Like, oh, I saw that a couple days ago in that one. Yep, 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 yep. And and not in a way that felt like it was pandering. That's good. Yeah. However, I liked the girl in the first one. I didn't care about her in the second one <laughs> like she, like i understand that it's not like it's 
yes, it's kind of marketed to our age group, but also definitely trying to get a younger demographic based on the actors that are in it. But it felt like Paul Rudd carried the movie. I mean, like he had the best lines. Oh yeah, it's Paul Rudd. He's Even, gonna do that. He's yeah. yeah he's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he he does he did not disappoint. Um, I give it a solid like one and a half. Okay, that's good. Like it, I liked Afterlife a little better, but it's about on par. Fair enough. I haven't seen Afterlife yet, so I skipped that one. I, I will get them all. I will do a Ghost Watchers. You will Ghost not Busters understand Frozen Empire if you've not seen Afterlife. No, no. I, I'm going to yeah. do them all at some point. Just yeah. All right, Gonzo. Um, so I watched and finished all three seasons of Resident Alien. Um, yes. So this is a recommendation from Captain Mizzy. Um, and so that was my whole thing because they were, they're nice episodes and I wanted to see the end because the last season, season three is on Peacock or whatever. It's not on Netflix. Uh, and so I was like, and it had commercials, so it was a pain in the butt. But, uh, I wanted to see and watch it. And... It's not a bad show. Um, I have a feeling. I hope it gets renewed so it gives us the la- another season because it is based off of a comic book. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's based off of a Dark Horse comic, uh, from uh-huh. what I understand. And there's a lot of movies like that. Yeah, for series. Yeah, and, oh, I'm um, sure. Uh, this the last season. It kind of. It's less about the resident alien, and it just starts branching out in all these subplots, which is okay, but. Alan Turdick is the show. I'm going to tell right now. He is the show. With with oh, yeah. scenes without him in it just aren't as good. Although I like all the characters and all the acting is great. But he just elevates the show a whole lot more. His physical comedy is perfect in this. His facial expressions are amazing. He knows how to get the physical comedy from his face and the way he acts and the way he talks. And his mannerisms and his everything on him. Um, it is it is great. I, I love him. He, you know. He's great at awkward. Yeah. You know what's so funny? Is he, I'm watching this and I go, he reminds me of Robin Williams. You know, how Robin Williams. I can see that. His, you know, he's got that awkward face and can make those weird expressions and can just be very physical comedy without trying really hard, you know, without slapsticking it type thing. And he does that really well with Resident Alien. On so the, just shy of like a Jim Carrey. Yes, yes. Without without go without overdoing it, and so his lines, son of a bitch. <laughs> You're just like you laugh every time he says it, and the way he does it, <laughs> and like I, I will call you dickhead. Yes, your name they, is dickhead. <laughs> they both went to Juilliard. Oh yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's one of my favorite clips of Alan Tunnick is him doing. The I went to Juilliard. That's, that's I why it came to my mind. And I'm like, <laughs> and I thought I heard in that Robin Williams went there too. Yeah. So I just double check Wikipedia, and I'm like, yeah, he went to Juilliard. They went to Juilliard. <laughs> yeah, he's he 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 does this really really well. His slaps his his physical comedy is really good. His facial expressions are great. The way he looks whenever he's trying to like, you know, the alien is trying to smile, and you're just like. Holy shit, that's uncomfortable to look at. <laughs> and he just, he's got it. Him in this, perfect. Uh, season one through three, good, fun, simple, nothing too crazy. Uh, there's some, and it's what, half hour episodes? Uh, 45. 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and it's great. Uh, I love the show. It's good and fun. I'd give it like a one. Because some of it just kind of gets bogged down with a lot of the other characters. But you feel for the other characters <laughs> too. But... He just overshadows everybody. You look forward to seeing him in scenes because he's his funny. chemistry with the kid in that show is oh, also yeah. just yeah they're they're really good. He he <laughs> everything he does is just pure perfection in this, and I enjoy it. Uh, Alan, if you're listening, you're awesome. You know you're not, but you're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not listening. You're you awesome. Yeah. 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 John, just to be clear, um, well. I'm sure you could probably guess, given what I watched there, what I watched second. I watched the original Roadhouse. <laughs> okay. Um, apparently, this is the first time I watched my Blu-ray copy of it, because I forgot Roadhouse is technically rated R. 
Oh, yeah. And really? all I saw was cable. You know, I saw Roadhouse on cable seven million times, and it is cut. Yeah. There's a lot more boobs and stuff. Mm hmm. And maybe a lot more cursing, too. A couple scenes I didn't necessarily remember. And I'm like, did I just like tune out the movie in the middle? It's possible when I was younger, but. I don't know to self by Roadhouse. Yeah. Um, and of course, if you don't know Roadhouse, the original is Patrick Swayze's a cooler, so he's like the head bouncer, and he's the second best in the business. But the best is getting slow, and the best is Wayne Garrett, who's played by Sam Elliott, who shows up later in the movie. And Sam Elliott in this is great. Almost better I've than Patrick Swayze original. himself. Oh, oh my, my god. god. So good. Like I I was talking to my husband about it. He was talking about how like this was like the first empathetic action hero. Yeah. I mean, like, like he feels like a person a at the time. Yeah, he, he feels like a person. That's the character. He yeah. has doubts. He, he changes his mind on what he's going to do based on things going around him. Like it makes sense. He's up a bunch of bikers and takes them to the hospital afterward. That's the, uh, that's the remake. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The remake, he beats up a bunch of bikers, takes them to the hospital. It's a funny We've scene. Not, we haven't seen the new one. Well, because in this one, he, he beats up a lot of people. He takes no one to the hospital except himself. Okay. Then my husband was way off. My bad. Yeah. But no, but that, that does happen in this That's, in, iro- in, in that's the ironic because we've not seen the new one. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, but Patrick Swayze is great in this. He got in shape for it. He's convincing as someone who can fight. Um, the fight scenes are good. Especially for the time, there are not a lot of cuts. You can you you're always pretty sure what's going on with everything. Um, the bar scenes are a bit exaggerated, but they're supposed to be. That's sort of the idea. And the idea is a guy bought a bar and he's coming to some money and he wants to clean it up. He's got too much trash for fact. He needs the best damn cooler in the business to do it. Musician, yes, uh, Jeff Healy. Jeff Healy band is the does all the music for the house musicians, and he is if you do not know the the blind guitarist from the past some years ago, and the music's all good because it's his, just his band doing it, yeah. And he was quite quite a good musician. I love that they build a background with him and the main character Dalton, where you know uh, they obviously know each other. He and the band know each other. There's there's a lot of little notes like that that make the world feel real. Now, yeah, it's still like an a, a over-the-top 80s, small-town problems type of thing at the end of the day. And if there is a criticism, it's that they don't really sort of introduce the main what's going to be the main plot of it until the second act. Um, uh, when they start introducing the real problem. They, they lay a little ground, groundwork early, but you don't really see it till the second act. But it's still enjoyable, has enjoyable fights. Um, dialogue could probably use a little work, too. But uh, it's fun. You're going to love the the chemistry between Patrick Swayze and um, my brain just stopped. Sam Elliott. Great. Yeah. Like Sam Elliott, under, underrated great actor. Yeah. And all the bit parts do their job. I thought you'd be tall, bigger. I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> Specifically bigger, because they all say it. When they go to hire him, he's like, I thought you'd be bigger. And then the doctor, when she's... She's uh, stitching him up, stapling him up. Sorry. I was like, you know, for this time of work, I thought you'd be bigger. And that's the the blind uh, Jeff A makes that joke, or hey, Jeff Lee makes that joke as well. You know, he goes, like, I, you play pretty well for a blind white boy. He's like, and I thought you'd be bigger. So it's all fun stuff. It's a, it's a good, it doesn't, oh, another thing in it overstays its welcome. It's a little over the top towards the end, but it's an 80s action movie. What the hell do you expect? Um, I'm going to give it one. And and most of those things are, weren't really flaws when it came out. The sort of parts, little parts haven't aged super well, but worth it. I mean, I, worth owning on Blu-ray for the extended. I mean, not, it's not really worth you care about the extended. It's just, it's a movie worth earning on Blu-ray because it's just a fun watch. Uh, Nerd, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, I started a new book but i don't think i'm far enough into it to really review it yet so do you want to talk about the deadpool and wolverine trailer oh gladly that looks freaking awesome i'm stupid excited um 
the chemistry already between Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds is just superb. Um well, you know, uh, I mean, they were they were friends before this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And they they it, would it prank shows. each other. You know, you can they pranked each other in real life before this even came out, and you can tell that that he Ryan Reynolds says, I, "I know you said that you wouldn't do Wolverine again, but shit, dude, I got this." And he's like, "Fucking hey, let's do it." Yeah. He's like, oh yeah. I mean, Hugh Jackman already had the the bonus of having one of the few comic characters to go out. In a perfect manner. Correct. That was perfect. That, I mean, I saw yeah, the clip it, from it, it uh, comes the. It out right before my birthday, so I'm like, I know what I'm doing that weekend. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. I, <laughs> looks good. L- happy to see it. Love that they're gonna they're gonna multiverse. I love that they're using it as like a big deal movie. To, mm-hmm. I feel like this is gonna reinvigorate the 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 Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's weird to say to say that about like one of the biggest cinematic universes ever, but it's gonna reinvigorate it. It should get people more excited again. Yeah, I, I, know I feel that... like we need more of these kind of Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah, I mean, not just that, just less movies, more hype, more, more quality to them. Like honestly, yes. make an hour special on Disney Plus, like fucking, uh, like fucking Werewolf uh, by Night. I loved Werewolf for anything. by Midnight. Yeah, that's the perfect thing. Just and these actors love doing this because they've got, they know, like I've got a job, and it's important for them. Like, oh, hey, you want me to show up at this? Yeah, I'll show up at this. Yep. So I love all those guys about, like, the only person who made a stink had a warranted reason and resolved it. It's all good. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that movie and what they do going forward with that, introducing the X-Men into the Marvel Universe. Um, I know that should uh, be awesome. a lot of people have been, like, dissecting the trailer and they, you know, some of the Easter eggs that have been in there are kind of funny. Like uh, two of the guns that Deadpool is holding are the guns from Goldeneye. Um, <laughs> I wondered about that. And then like I'm one of the more, signs was yeah, Leafield. the Rob Leafield feet, like Leafield's feet or whatever. Like yeah. oof. And the funny thing is, is Rob Leafield himself like copied that image and posted like this looks great and I'm enjoy happy to see it. Mm-hmm. Like this is. Like, I love he doesn't take himself too seriously. He understands he had a style that was yeah. stylistic. And the song that they used for the trailer, like, you oh, yeah. know, like, the the music choices for the Deadpool movies have just been fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know why Deadpool 2 is forgotten almost. It was a very fun movie. I know they fridged the girlfriend early, and that's not good, but... It fit the story. It wasn't like they fridged her just to fridge her. They fridged it to get the movie going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm i looking forward to it. It looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. looks like, you know, it looks like that bridging, gapping movie that I hope that they bring the X-Men in the MCU, which I think it really, you really need that in the MCU. Um, I think you need that mutant type thing, and it'll help boost the MCU. And also, everyone now gets that to, to ask the same question that Marvel Crisis Protocol players asked a couple years ago. Who's Ka- who the f- Cassandra Nova? Yeah, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask. I've never heard of her. Oh, yeah. She's very... She was a big deal, but she still... You don't know about her. It, she, it, she, yeah, but yeah. she was a big deal in a lull in comics. That's Correct. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, not many people knew about her. And everybody's like, who? And you're like, yes, this is... Okay, here's the subplot. You're never going to uh, see fits. this. It's stupid small, and it was not a. It was not done well. Yeah. But I mean, it's perfect for for a movie like this because yep. the good thing is they can use everything, and it's quote unquote disposable. Yep. And, and the, with the integration of uh, TVA, TVA, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, are we going to get variants? Uh, there was a hint at a possible Lady Deadpool. And I'm trying to remember what the Easter egg was in the trailer, but it's there. I mean, the whole Deadpool family, there's a bunch of Deadpools. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Gwenpool. Gwenpool. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My last one to talk about, I haven't uh, finished it yet. It's on my list. Uh, I did watch X-Men 97 and uh, still loving it. Still great. Not say anything about it because some people haven't seen it. Um, So just keep watching it. I hope they continue with it because it's been really, really good. Um, so I started Dead Boys Detectives. 
Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a story about two ghosts that are detectives that help other ghosts and supernatural beings. Uh, what I really like about the show, and of course it is done by Neil Gaiman, um, and oh. Death from Sandman makes an appearance in the show, which is great because I loved her in um, Sandman, and I, I like this. And Neil Gaiman says, no, I'm not trying to build a Sandman, Sandman universe, universe. But why not, you know, put yeah. her in here? Why not have characters show up in different movies? I Correct. mean, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. All those 80s movies that had the same newscaster in it was just cool. Like, yeah. oh, cool, I recognize this guy. You, you don't need to explain that is because people have seen it. Yeah. Uh, I'm only two episodes in. I'm going to get started uh, after I'm done here and get some more episodes in. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It kind of, it, 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 if anything, it reminds you like of a Hardy Boys with goats. Uh, okay. I feel. Okay. That, I heard goats, not ghosts. <laughs> for a second. I'm down for either. Both are on to, on point with them. Yeah. Um, but it's been enjoyable. It was fun. Um, I'll watch the rest of them and then give a full review. But uh, it definitely, uh, I hope it gets renewed. But because it's got a pretty good fan base and so on and so forth. So. Um, we had a flicker. Other than that, I'm enjoying it. So hopefully we'll finish it in soon, and I'll give you a review next week. Cool. Uh, not brush it. Dave and I are four episodes into Fallout and enjoying it. And then this week, I actually listened to the whole thing of uh, a podcast I usually get clips of on YouTube. It's called the Unsubscribe Podcast. Okay. It's a bunch of gun tubers and related things. Um, and man, those guys are irreverent funny but they're generally good dudes like i always worry about them because some of them are a little republican for me if you know what i mean and i don't like to make it political but listening to this you hear those guys like these guys are all good dudes you know those are the kind of republicans we need around the kind of just good dudes who have slightly different priorities it's fine but this last one it was the fat electrician who goes on channel if you don't check if you haven't checked it out please do he is the funniest of them and, of course, his co-host normally is there. And then they've got Angry Cop, who has his own channel, and he's funny because he's a cop and a, uh, uh Army Reserve drill sergeant. So he does a lot of fun stuff with that. He's very, very not politically correct, but sometimes in all the right ways, sometimes in the wrong ways. But. And then it had Habitual Line Crosser, who has his own burgeoning YouTube channel where he does a lot of... Uh, Funny talks on current events from a sort of military perspective, but they're humorous. And the four of them just talking for like an hour and a half is just super fun. There's such a conversation going. It's sort of like what we do, um, but a little more gun and military uh, oriented. It was super fun. I suggest checking it out if you're into that thing at all. And check out the individual guides if you're interested, because they're all pretty amusing by themselves. I uh, started a book that I'll be reviewing. It's called Legends and Lattes. Um, oh it's about an adventure. It's a fantasy book about an adventurer who who basically hangs up their swords, and decides to retire, and open a coffee shop, and all the shenanigans that happen thereafter. And there's a there's like two or three books in this series, and I've had several people recommend it to me. And I just I just borrowed it from the library a couple days ago, so. I should be done with the second Shadowrun book I'm reading here soon. I just have... T- a lot of times I've been done with the computer and be like, I need to die. Go lie down and I'm immediately asleep. No time to read. So, <laughs> But trying to finish it up going something else. I need to get back into the reading. The library nearest just opened. Yes. Yay! I'm going to bring a pile of books and I'm be like, have books. Enjoy. I'm going to see if they need anything once in a while. Maybe they want to have someone run D&D or something. We'll see. We'll see what they need and help them out where I can. Help your local libraries. Oh, yeah. They're great. Well, guys, that is know? pretty much yeah. our podcast. Um, we will be back next week. Uh, we'll give you a new topic and so on and so forth. But we also know what our episode 300 is going to be. Uh, we will get started on that as soon as possible. We'll make a big old post and a big old thing about it. Um and uh, it's all going to be on Nerd. I'll do the streaming. Nerd will do all the running. And we'll make all the jokes. And we will see if we can derail this campaign quicker than uh, anybody else. I mean, uh, have a good time playing. <laughs> It'll just be a one shot just to say, you know, thanks for sticking with I'll us. I'll just, for yeah, I, I'm just going to take what I've gotten, trim it down. 
so that we can get it into two hours instead of like three and a half. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Uh, we are going to actually send y'all off to uh, No Guts, No Glory TV. They uh, are streaming right now, and you could always deal with it. Yep, it's going to be his final uh, session of the original Battletech unmodded game. Okay. We'll get you some uh, Battletech um, and stuff. But, guys, as usual, please look after each other. Please take care of each other. Um, just simple, hey, how's it going? Whatever you want to do will be great. Um, but uh, if you see us at a convention, or if you know we're going to be there, make sure to look Hi. us up. Uh, be on the lookout. Nova we Open. New... John's going to Nova Open. Um, our, our first con in like five years. We, uh, we'll have some new stickers coming out, too. We have our Captain Mizzy redesigning some stuff for us. Oh. Um, they uh, will be pretty, pretty cool. Um, when she gets a chance to do it, we'll see it. Um, as usual, look after each other. If you see something, say something. If you hear something, say something. And if you can do something, do something. If you can't, find somebody that will. For more than the dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Nerd. Good night. Thanks for listening to More Than Dice, making the world a better, nerdier place, one dumb joke at a time. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss a future episode. For more nerdy action or to connect with your hosts, check them out on Facebook.com slash more than dice and twitch.tv slash more underscore than underscore dice. Until next time, stay nerdy, stay proud, and we'll see you soon on the More Than Dice podcast.